Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm gonna teach you how to safely and successfully trim your dog's nails. Now make sure you guys watch to the end of this video because I have a secret, a secret weapon that I'm gonna bring out that almost every single dog does well with to help trim the nails. Celebrity dog trainer Tom Davis is here to show us his best tricks to help you decide if you decide to get a puppy today. All right, you guys, so this is Petey. He's a dog in here for our board and train program and he's gonna be our demo dog today. So there's two things why dogs do not like their nails being trimmed in the first place. The first reason is, is because a lot of dogs actually don't like their feet being touched. The second reason is, is because maybe at some point you have tried or a groomer has tried to trim your dog's nails and you've accidentally hit the quip, which will make your dog sensitive and of course not like their nails being trimmed in the future. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about the traditional clippers and we're also gonna be talking about the Dremel. In the comments below, I wanna know what you guys prefer because I honestly wanna know. I really like this, but this has also worked good for a lot of my clients. Let me know in the comments. So there's just a couple things that you guys will need to make this as successful as possible. The first thing we have is a leash. This is our no bad dog training leash. It's four foot and we have an elevated bed. The reason why we have the leash is because we don't want the dog, if they do get nervous to run away and if they do get distracted to run away either. The other thing I'm using is this elevated bed, which gives me leverage with a dog that's this small. Now, if you're working at home with a dog that's maybe taller or bigger, you may not need an elevated bed like this. So what we're gonna do if your dog is nervous about the equipment or what we call equipment aware, is you're just gonna bring these pieces of equipment onto the scene, if you will. You're gonna put them down, you're gonna put them up there, you're gonna put them around the dog, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out whatever the dog likes. This is called desensitization. So we're actually just taking, hey, you may be a little afraid of this, you may have uh, not liked this in the past, but now that it's out and there's food involved or there's a toy involved or cheese, chicken, you can use really whatever you want to start developing a better relationship between between this and the equipment. So you wanna take your time. So again, some dogs, like Lakota, my personal dog, if you bring this out, she's like, yeah, no way, I don't like that. And so some dogs may be a little bit more sensitive to others. So if your dog is very sensitive, this may be way over there. And as you get better, it may get closer and closer. And what I always suggest is try to use as high reward food as possible. Now, Petey here really doesn't care about this because he's probably not have his nails trimmed in a long time considering how long they are. So all we're doing is we're putting this here and we're doing this. So this association is really either absolutely nothing or it's a good association because I'm just using some food to start the process. So after you've desensitized the equipment that you may need to do, then you start desensitizing actually touching the dog's areas that you're gonna be trimming. So as you can see these daggers, they're very long. And you can tell he really doesn't have an adverse reaction to it, he doesn't really care. Now if your dog does, you should be taking your time. So you may wanna grab the dog's leg like this and then pay the dog with something very valuable and then remove. Grab the dog like this and then pay the dog. Grab the dog here and then pay the dog. So your goal is to say, hey, when this happens, food happens. When I touch you here, this happens. And you wanna do it as quickly as you can. This is really quick, then release. And then as you get better, you're gonna be holding this paw. One, two, three. Yay, good boy, good job. One, two, three, four, five, six, good job. And then same thing on all the other paws. Now, luckily, I've never really worked with Petey before, so I honestly had no idea how he was gonna react. And he's doing very, very, very good. But if your dog does have a, a bad reaction to you starting to touch these parts of his body, his or her body, then you just need to take your time. This may take you a couple of days to acclimate. And again, what you wanna do is say, hey, look at this. Oh yeah, I really like that. You take the paw, good job, bud, good job and so on and so forth. So again, I'm lucky, I'm getting lucky with him. I honestly, like I said, had no idea how he was gonna react. So that's called desensitizing, actually touching the dog. That's desensitizing the equipment to the dog. It's just sort of the process. And like I said before, all dogs are gonna react differently. Petey's just being absolutely great. And we'll see how he does when we actually start clipping these nails here in a couple minutes. But this is the very first step, desensitizing, touching the dog in the places you're gonna be handling. And then of course, bringing the equipment out and desensitizing that. It may take you up to a week to start that process or possibly even longer. Here's a vision for you guys to look at and you can see the dog's nail is right here and then the quick is right here. So the quick is where the blood will come from if you clip it. So for those of you who know uh, what I'm talking about know very well that it doesn't stop bleeding very easily and it can bleed for a long period of time. And of course the dog may be sensitive to it. It may be a little painful for the first couple of days. It's kind of like trimming your nails too short as well. If this is the first time you're doing this and you're trying this at home and maybe you don't have a groomer around you or maybe you don't trust the groomer with your dog or maybe you're just trying 
trying this out for the first time with your puppy and sometimes if you hit there quick they actually don't care at all but they're bleeding all over the place and there's something that's called it's this powder that I'll, I'll list below and what it does is it really fastly stops the bleeding and it's a safe thing to use for your dog and that's what I would recommend to kind of have on hand when you guys are doing this for the first couple times mistakes happen and that's what you want to do if you do quick clip the quick. Now, if you're new to this channel, we put out videos like this every single week. We put out videos to how to train an aggressive dog, to teach a dog how to walk nicely on a leash, how to use proper equipment with your dog, and of course, how to trim your nails. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to join the No Bad Dog Army and follow along as we go every week. So you have a couple different options when trimming your dog's nails. You have, again, the traditional clippers. I really like this orange, I don't know what it's called. I'll link it in the description below, but stainless steel, um, they're just, they're really good. We've had them for years. This is something that you can really hold on to for a long time. Good quality. And then you have the Dremel, which I'll link in the description below. Now the Dremel, for those of you who don't know, is basically this little spinny thing that you can attach multiple different things on here. But when we're talking about the actual uh, Dremel for the dogs, it's just going to have sandpaper on here. The pros and cons, I guess, would be the it's easier to make less mistakes on the quick with this and clipping that quick and making the dog uh, bleed and making the dog maybe be a little bit sensitive. But when you're dealing with a dog like this with all this hair right here, it can get wound up and actually pull the dog's hair and make things worse. So I'm gonna be using the clippers today, but I'm also gonna show you very, very quickly and very successfully how to use this as well. All right, you guys, so I'm just gonna show you really quick. Now again, Petey is a smaller dog that I trust. So I'm gonna have him right here. I'm gonna to listen to him, you know, just in case he gets a little grumbly. I'm gonna watch his body language the best I can. It's hard to see his face and his expression with this Muppet face here, but I'm feeding him here. I'm getting the nails ready. I'm gonna start with the middle two here. I'm gonna get my clippers out. Good. I'm gonna start with just literally trimming the end pieces off. Boom, good boy. Now you don't wanna to go too fast. That's what a lot of people do. You can, if you're familiarized with the clippers and you familiarize yourself with the dog, you can trim these up pretty quick. And that's actually what I normally do. But for a new dog like this to Petey, he doesn't know me and I don't know what his experience is at home for nail trimming. It doesn't look like a lot considering how long his nails are, but you wanna take your time. Maybe just go randomized and, and feed him and make it more fun than it is anything else. But we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna get this out. We're gonna find the tip here, good boy. Trim it off, yay, good boy, and we're gonna pay him. Good job, buddy. Now you guys can see, I trimmed uh, quite a bit off here already. I'm gonna give Petey a break in between those two cuts, kinda let him be a dog, play with him a little bit. What do you think, buddy? Oh, he's a good boy. Cool, we're gonna get into it again. So we're gonna pay him, and we're gonna get that third nail going here. Good, dropped a little bit of the food, go right to the end and trim it. Good boy, Petey. Lots of positive reinforcement. Good boy. I'm using like really soft treats so it's easy for him to work out. Good boy. So we're gonna get this one right here. Good boy. Get to the end and trim. Good boy. Good job, Petey. So as you can see, we already started to trim some of these off. So in this diagram right here on the screen, it's gonna show you the quick and where it is. Now with black nails, um, it's a little bit harder to see, and I'm gonna be honest, because of my experience with doing this, I just have an idea of where they are and where these comfortably need to be sitting as far as nails go. So that's why I'm trimming them kind of at my own pace without really checking, just because I know that these are very long and I know where they need to be. So in this diagram, you'll see where the quick normally is and how you can find it on your dog as well. But you'll be able to see it, especially on like clear nails or whiter nails, you'll be able to see it a lot better than you can with the black nails. Now, another pro tip is I am using a treat bag here, and actually he's more motivated by the treats than anything else. So if you'll notice, when he goes down like this, all I'm gonna do is come back up, trim the tip off again, trim the tip off again, trim the tip off again. Good boy, Petey. Now it's important for everybody out there that has a dog to trim their dog's nails. Whether you have a professional groomer do it, or you learn in this video how to do it successfully at your house, because it can actually cause damage. I actually watched and done some research on what it can actually do. It can change your dog's posture. It can change your dog's back. It can change your dog's spine. It can change your dog's muscles and orthopedically. So there's a lot of really, really important benefits to making sure that your dog's nails are trimmed at all times or as, as much as you possibly can. So you may hear them clicking on the floor. If you can hear them clicking on the floor, that probably means that they're too long. So when your dog is walking throughout your house on the tile or on your hardwood, you wanna make sure that 
that you don't hear your dog's nails clipping. Now, the other important thing, and groomers out there, you guys will attest to this, is if your dog is a little nervous and your dog does get into a situation where they may get a little agitated, like a kid when you're brushing their hair or you're trying to brush their teeth, they don't like it, they may kick and scream and get upset. And dogs can do that too, especially if you're nervous or you're new or you're novice to introducing nail trimming to your dog. So I always recommend muzzle conditioning a dog. This is a size one Baskerville. I'll leave the link in the description below. This is a great opportunity for you to be completely safe with a dog that you're a little unsure of. The reality is, guys, is you're gonna be trimming some dog's nails who are just never going to like it. They've had bad experiences. It's uncomfortable for them, maybe. This is something that I think a lot of dog owners should just learn how to do in general. If you're working with a dog, I think it's important for dogs to be able to have a muzzle on and be comfortable with it and not have to fight it on. Because if you do get into a situation where you need the muzzle, like nail trimming, you know how to do it. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to muzzle condition your dog, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications because that video is coming this month as well or later this month. And it's important for you guys to learn how to condition your dogs on the muzzle for things like this. But to give you a quick 10 second crash course, it's gonna be a lot of the same stuff that we've been talking about. You're gonna put it on and you're gonna pay the dog. So if you're crate training your dog or you're maybe learning to teach your dog how to trim their nails, it's the same thing. You wanna make it as fun and as best experience as you possibly can. Now we have a size one muzzle on for him and now we're going to get into doing some of the other nails so we're on to the last nail right here and he's starting to get a little agitated but that's okay good boy good job positive reinforcement so take a break spend a day spend two days spend a couple hours come back to the next paw and this is something you may want to do individually do one nail just a little bit and then take a break for a day and then the next nail and then the next nail it just depends on how well your dog adapts to trimming the nails so my point is if you need to take your time take your time there's no reason to rush any of this you want to make this as comfortable as you can for the dog so you can continue to do it in the future now that we got the nails trimmed up nice with the clippers i'm going to show you how to use the dremel to get them down just a little bit further that may be a little bit safer for you guys so the dremel again just has this sandpaper at the end makes this noise. So it's gonna be the same process. So now that we got the nails trimmed up pretty good here, right? But they're still pretty long. So now we're gonna use the Dremel to kind of finish them off. And now he's starting to get a little feisty on us here. So when you're using the Dremel, you just wanna do a little bit out of the time. And as you guys can see, he's very nervous about the Dremel. So you just wanna take your time, make sure you don't get his hair caught in there. It's okay, buddy. All right, you guys, we're getting closer to the end of the video and I'm gonna introduce you this secret weapon, which is going to be a peanut butter jar. I like to use, you can really use anything. You can get the sticky mats that you put on the floor, but in my case, it's perfect because it's basically a peanut butter jar that is almost empty. Now, if your dog is allergic to peanut butter, this is not gonna work. You may wanna find an alternative, obviously. So the secret weapon is exactly what it looks like. You can cut this in half and you can have the dog eat out of it. Now, if you have another person with you, all you have to do is have them hold this and then you can get back to work to trimming the nails. You're gonna do a little bit at a time. Good boy. A little bit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Lots of positive reinforcement. Good boy, Petey. Good boy. And these are already looking a lot better than they were. Now this is just a video on how to get started with trimming your dog's nails. I'm gonna leave a link below of a video that I found that a veterinarian did that was very helpful for me on how to actually start cutting your dog's nails at, you know, weekly or daily to get them to exactly where you need to get them. This is me just cutting off uh, a ton of extra, extra nail to get them to a point where they're safer for the dog. But there is some really cool information and techniques out there to actually trim the dog's nails appropriately so it helps them all around in their form. All right, you guys, I hope you like this video. Make sure you hit this to subscribe to my channel or click this other video to check out all the other cool things we're doing with dogs.